What is going on with the lithium refinery in Corpus Christi? Tesla broke ground in May of 2023, and it has been just dead silent. Well, not really. It's actually moving along quite nicely. We'll show you the progress. We'll talk to you about the timeline, and we'll tell you what comes next. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> As I so often am by my good buddy Mark from the north. Yes, and the east, I guess. How are you, Mark? North and east from you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm out in the Wild West, as you know. Uh, it's very uncivilized out here, as, as you also know. And I've turned off my hair animator because even though it is so nice and, and toasty in here. It's I, almost uh, six degrees in the studio. That's almost. That's too much. It's an improvement from some of the recent days we've had. Brian, you should get a heater. Correct. I turned it off. I just mentioned that. <laughs> Let's get into it. Um, I'm not going to play the video, but just show the video. Give it a thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up. It is free. Uh, you can see the lithium refinery behind Joe Tegmeyer here. Great guy. Uh, friend of the show. Um, I do have permission to play the videos, but you know, I'd rather you go check it out yourself. Uh, so this is the progress. That's looking pretty good, right? That's looking much better than the entrance they showed at <laughs> Unveil Day. Yes. So uh, we've got, let's see if we can get here. Over here on the side, they're going to be putting in a rail stub, which is a great way to bring in huge volumes of material, of basically dirt, uh, lithium-rich dirt, but dirt nonetheless. And then this is the, the factory um, over up top here along the the white building in the top middle uh, there's conveyor belts that bring it up that will then feed it into this long skinny line here and down at the bottom in the middle you see a, a loading ramp which is where the lithium will leave the factory so let's get up here it's just a staging area uh, this is another area they are prepping um, eventually there will be two lines here uh, but they're building the first line first uh, because I think they've got processes to dial in. Hmm. What would you guess this big old pool here is for? Well, it is a lithium mine. So is this going to be part of the, the drying pits? Uh, it is not. It is okay. not. It is not that kind of place. It is because out here, there is no water service. This is their water service. Ah. So they can collect rainwater and reuse it. And from there, you'll see right uh, along in between the cars, there's a canal that is not yet in use uh, that will bring the water over to the factory. Um, Another interesting point we made it in a previous video was about the rail spur. So these guys are actually bringing a rail spur in. They're paying the money to lay the rails because they know the volume is going to support putting in a brand new rail line. Yes. And when you bring in a train load of something, you can park the cars and leave the train cars there while you're unloading. You don't have to immediately get them offloaded from the semi trailers or what have you. And it, it's just a better system to have your own big, big storage yard like that. And then, uh, yeah, you can see a canal here that, uh, will bring water in or out. This might be an outflow but it is a channel nonetheless. And you can see some of the buildings look uh, done enough to be outfitted. Um, heading over here, we don't know what this is for. I think it's just a storage for dirt at this point. I'll be curious to know what they do with the spoil from the material that doesn't have lithium in it. Hopefully that is something that is safe enough. Uh, in the comments, you can let us know. So here we see the channel that leaves the waterway and will uh, at some point bring water over to the facility. So let's talk. Uh, I think an important thing to talk about is timeline. Now you can, I mean, here, this is actually a good shot of the, of the conveyor belts that will bring material over to the actual facility. And then let's see, getting over here. Yeah, there's the conveyor belts. And then uh, if you want to know more about the chemical processes, the chemistry behind this, those are all in Joe's video. Please go check them out. Link in the description. And this is the two part. This is the kiln, the, the big uh, rusted looking tube here. And the one beneath it is a is a cooler uh, to cool out the um, materials. And then, of course, over here, you've got all the rest of it that refine that does the final refinement uh, to get it to get it to what it needs to be. So you can see quite a bit of progress, quite a bit left to go. Now, Brian, would you say that with this skeleton that we're seeing on the outside here of the building, was that 
will it be covered by traditional building siding at some point, or is this some sort of outdoor construction in some sense? That is a fantastic question. I'm confident it will be covered. It will be sheathed when it is complete, uh, but that today it is not critical. Um, and it is easier to load equipment in and out. You can see the cranes there, bring everything in. If you can just bring it to the wall and move it through the wall hole, you're going to save some time. You yep. can see they've already started putting some of the upper floor decking in. Um, yeah. So we should talk timeline. How is this doing? Um, well, I have heard a lot of people say, well, this is, this is moving at a snail's pace. So I went ahead and pulled up some other lithium refinery projects. Uh, this one, May of 2022, this was announced uh, with a 20 month turnaround. So since we only started in May of 23, um, we're not at 20 months yet. And a lot of these projects that I found uh, from other locations have like this one is was completed in, I think, 20 months, but it did so with 14,000 employees building it. Yeah. That's a lot. That's, that's a number that we do not see, uh, in, in these videos, there is not 14,000 people here. Um, and the other projects, same kind of thing. Um, this is a little bit small. The, I will link this. It is a, <laughs> hey, you can use the AI to ask you when. Uh, so this is another one. Broke ground uh, and is expected to begin production in early 26. So yeah, this is, it takes time. It takes time to get them built. Yeah, so, so this, we're looking at a couple of years. We're looking at a couple of years. So the other thing that we don't know is Tesla believes they have some secret sauce. They've got some new process or procedure that will make lithium refinement easier or better. When we look at the equipment that's going in, the, the, the style of line that's being built, we can't see any of that. We don't know what the secret sauce is. We're just basing our estimates on what we know from other lithium refineries. So that could be something that, that takes more time. This plant could be, in my opinion, in operation um, in the second half of 25. It could be June, July. It could be December. So why, why, why are they no longer rushing? Mm. Lithium prices? They have enough material at this point to build the batteries anyways. And this is going to be some extra capacity that uh, they will be bringing online. It is that. It is that lithium prices were sky high when they broke ground, uh, when they planned this facility, and and lithium prices have since come down. Uh, that doesn't mean don't build it. That doesn't mean abandon it. You do not know what the future holds. Uh, and their process could be cheaper, but it does mean that paying expedite costs to get the whole thing online a few months early, even a year early, is probably no longer financially sound. Um, and if we see lithium prices begin to tick up again, maybe they will begin expediting at that point, but otherwise it doesn't really make sense to do that. So it is all of those things. And it could be that their secret sauce has, um, has the ability to do things in a better, cheaper way, um, but it, not. It is amazing how they have to juggle all these different financial balls at the same time. Uh, and if you've got the world commodity prices that go up and down and you're having to adjust your plan uh, almost weekly based on what's being thrown at you. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, so if you have questions or thoughts on the lithium refinement bit, by all means, uh, do share them. Um, but with that said, we need to get into questions from last week's show. Yes, every week we answer your questions. I went ahead and gave myself a flattering one this time. Uh, you know what? I haven't liked the video because I don't like the video, but I will like it just as a reminder that you guys are also free to like it. Here we go. For those who cannot charge at home, they may still be able to get eight hours a day if their work location is charging, flipping the schedule upside down. Car sits idle at night and charges during the day. I wonder if Tesla will give free or inexpensive charging to people with their cars on the robo taxi network. Maybe the car earns money during your work hour, eight hour work day and is fully charged when you get off work. Do you think uh, we'll see some bargains that way? I think you may hear about sporadic bargains where Tesla 
you know, like, like, te- like in Texas, home charging uh, is, has been a, a plus uh, for a certain amount of people, but I don't think this is going to be widespread. Too many utilities, too many different people that you have to pay uh, out for energy prices. Indeed. And I think we're still thinking about it the wrong way. Yep. Well, my car takes me to work, it goes out and makes money, and then it comes back and picks me up. Why don't you take somebody else's home? In fact, why'd you buy the car at all? It, it'll take some rethinking of what makes sense for you. Is it really that much cheaper to drive your own robo taxi home than to take someone else's? Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's something that people can decide for themselves when the time comes. Uh, you got a lemon tree with Christmas lights. Brian and Mark has a cardboard box. Uh, yet yeah, Mark has a cardboard box. Look at that. You do have yep, a cardboard still there. box. This. There's there. There the we go. Classic. Look, keyboard. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And rest assured that outside of this frame, my office is definitely not an absolute chaos. Uh <laughs> So, no, there's nothing. It's what about those eye paces that Waymo uses? Jag going to buy them back? Who'll pay for moving all those sensors to other cars? Or will Waymo continue using the Jags they have? Thoughts? They're just going to use what they've got and then they're going to scrap them yep. uh, or, or sell them basically for scrap. That's yep. that's you never would remove the sensors and then sell it to somebody else. Uh, you're going to you're going to keep it internal and you're going to uh, just get rid of it. Yep. I wonder if you've watched the Jaguar CEO and what he said about this and looked at the number of DEI committees. I'm not addressing DEI nonsense. Companies do company things. Companies don't care. Any thoughts on Range Rover EV? Any hope it'll be more reliable than the gas one? Well, now I thought I made good jokes. Wow. Reliability (laughs) and Range Rover in the same sentence. That actually, that made me physically uncomfortable to hear you say it. Uh, so, uh, but to answer the question <laughs> and it's to, just to finish it, that'd be great. Cause it looks and drives awesome. It just needs a better drivetrain and software. I think it's great that you think that that's all it needs. Uh, it needs, it's the engineering from, from the, from the first, from ever from every angle, because it was this, you know, a friend, I knew a friend who had a Range Rover and at 70, 80,000 miles, all four airbags went out on the suspension and that it was, I think a thousand or 2000 a wheel. And so he just didn't do it. He drove around in the bounciest, most sickening car you've ever seen. It looked great. Uh, but I think their problems run so much deeper guys in the comments. What do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, head over to Mark's channel, see what the Tesla life is up to. They got some new insights out of me on cyber cab last week. And it was great. Casey, uh, brought up some great points about physics in terms of the wheels that I hadn't considered and the engineers hadn't mentioned. Uh, I imagine the engineers knew all those things, but they didn't understand that I'm so deep in the weeds, you're going to need a (laughs) bloodhound to find me. Uh, So yeah, head over to Mark's channel, see what he's up to. Uh, Leave comments, leave questions. If you have questions, clearly we will answer them. And everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when you get your own lemon tree with Christmas lights.